I think if you ask a lot of us who are on the committee that have lost loved ones, it's not something we often want to do. It's, it's we feel we have to. Um, one of the things after you lose someone is this need to know that the organization is making changes. I have a um, beautiful blonde hair, blue eyed nine year old daughter who is a quirky little girl, contagious laugh, funny, avid reader, and she was a blooming artist, not so good, but and an athlete. And she's no longer with me anymore. Um, she died of medical errors. And if we were in school, I could say it's a multiple choice of what she died from. She got a hospital-acquired infection. She was a classic case of failure to rescue, where all the signs were there and that she was deteriorating and no one did anything. She was septic. She was in a teaching institution where the fear of hierarchy was there and the resident didn't go up the chain of command. Um, they did something that they call anchoring in her diagnosis where they thought it was the original thing and that's all that they could see. And therefore they had premature closure that said this was it and failed to look at all the other signs. So you can pick A, you can pick A, B, or C, or you can pick all of the above. She had multiple errors. The organization where she died shut down on me. They wouldn't talk about what happened. They would not give me her medical records. I could get part of them, but I could not get all of them. It took the organization where she died three years, seven months, and 28 days to have a conversation with me, a real conversation. And if there's one thing that is so important that MedStar Health do, that is to have a good disclosure process. And that is an ongoing process. Because you see, the first time we're harmed by an event, the second time when we don't find out what happened, it becomes the second tragedy. Because we carry this guilt that we didn't protect our children. And it's, um, it's very difficult to maneuver through life feeling that way. I'd rather she be here than have to do this. But if I know that someone else doesn't have to wake up to an empty bed or sit at a kitchen table where a chair that used to be filled isn't filled anymore, then we're doing a good thing to make the world a better place. If you've lost a loved one due to medical errors, there's this innate feeling that overcomes that you, you have to know that it won't happen to someone else. And that's why people get involved with patient safety. You may have a loved one that walks in the organization someday, a, a hospital, a MedStar Health Hospital, and you wanna know that they're safe from the minute they walk through the door and that when they exit that hospital, that they are coming out being better than when they walked in there, because that's the ultimate goal. But in so many cases, that's not what happens. And that's why patient safety is so important. We have to learn, one, to speak up. We have to learn to advocate for our loved ones. And we can do it in a respectful way, but at the same time, we have to be able to push back to say, you know what, you didn't wash your hands. And you didn't do a double check. You didn't ask the name. You didn't check the bracelet. You didn't do the you know patient ID number. Um, we also, should be okay to write a list of questions and say, sit down with us for five minutes. Look me in the face, have eye contact with me. Don't be rushing out the door. And here's my five questions I have right now. Let's have a conversation about this because that's shared decision-making. That's advocacy. That's the patient or family being involved in their own care. I would like to see the MedStar system become the model system of how you engage with patients and families. And we are just on the early stages of patients and families really starting to take control of their care. And it's, it's being pushed from them, but multiple organizations. So where we are now as a healthcare system and where we are 10 years from now, 
is going to look vastly different. And I think the Patient and Family Advisory Council want to be part of that change and what it looks like 10 years down the road. Because the only way for an organization to learn is to show the failures and say, we are fallible, but we're going to learn about this, we're going to tell you about it, so that all of us can, together can make the system better. <laughs>